grouping and the regroup button. So groupings is all about the breakdown structure itself and the regroup button is actually kind of like a refresh. So sometimes if I mentioned about dragging and dropping, sometimes the database needs a kind of a little kick because uh, you might visually see that it hasn't occurred on the screen. If you hit the regroup button, treat it as like a refresh button. So it should snap everything back into place. If um, you've accidentally drag and dropped something and, it, and it's moved and you're not quite sure where and it's or something like that. So that's a useful thing to know about, but it's not generally going to be used very much. But the grouping button, this is where we create our cost breakdown structure. So I mentioned that you can have multiple top nodes. So at the moment you can just see the first one is here. And what will happen is every time I add a cost breakdown structure sort of folder, it will just say new, new. And if I double click that, I can change the ID in the description from new to something else. So it, we might want to call it something like labor. I'll repeat that one here again, similar to what I said earlier about IDs. ID of labor has to be just a thing. Sorry, the ID has to be a single word. It can't be labor of, you know, you can't do that in here. Um, it has to be a single word or a single reference point. So total project cost and then we've got labor. If I click on labor and now add, it's not going to add something beneath it. I didn't mean for it to be there. I can drag and drop it to the top. So it's now sharing a position on the same level as where labor is. So we might have um, plant. Spell that one right. And then you might want to have another one for materials. But if you, so that's going to be our super simple cost breakdown structure. We could keep adding levels beneath it and beneath that and beneath that and go as deep as you need to. Um, but if you're manually creating these, you're probably going to do something simple like I've done here today. If you're going to do anything more complex, you're probably going to use the import export from Excel. So we're going to be taking a look at that in just one moment. But until we get there, let's just have a, a revisit of um, what I said about multiple top nodes. So if I create another one, and I don't want it to be there because I want it to be at the very top. Don't hover here. Don't drop it there. It's going to go nowhere. It goes just a little bit above and I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little blue line just above where it says new new. If I release the mouse now, that now pops it onto the very, very top. So I've now got an alternative top node. So that means that I could have. Project. A project B. Oops, sorry, project A and project A because it's the same ID. I could relabel relabel this one to project D. Again, remember, no spaces when you're doing IDs. You can do it in the description there. Let's do that. Oops. OK, so if you wanted to then create a similar cost breakdown structure and replicate what you've done um, and have multiple versions of the same project where you're doing different methodologies, perhaps um, you could do that. Another reason why you might want to have multiple top nodes is simply, let's say we just add another one, we'll stick it to the top. Ooh, just again, drop that there. You might want to instead have um, I don't know, Punnage. So you might want to work out some alternative calculations and not use the default of cost, but instead, if you go to where it says type, you might want to put um, E for tons, or maybe it's going to be kilograms or whatever other alternative unit of measure you wish to use. So when you do that, that means that anything that is being uh, randomized in terms of the Monte Carlo, when you go to the uh, distribution graph later, um, the graph axis should show P rather than say cost, which is the default. Okay. 
So that's a, another way that you might want to consider using that. So I don't need that for this demonstration today, so I'm just going to remove that. OK, so we've got our project A and our project B. Um, if you want to, you can go to format and you can change the colors shown at different levels and all that kind of thing. It's similar to how you might do it in a, in a schedule. So I might just change the, the top node to have a kind of, I don't know, a gray. It's slightly deeper gray than that. Uh, and then you might want to have, I don't know, a little blue or something. Now in here, you can also see that you can show and display the IDs as either just the idea ID or the full path. So that's um, an option for you. Some people are going to want to see the full pathway uh, in the breakdown structure. So let's just hit OK. So now that's popped into existence. We've got our two different top nodes there, project A, project B. We've only actually put the, um, uh, the, the levels on for that for the labour plant material into project B, but that's OK. You can always come back to this. You could always build it up here in project B and then copy it over into project A if you want to. And you could use the import export and Excel to help you do that if you wanted to. OK, so we've now pretty much covered the fundamentals uh, in the first sort of seven videos. OK, so well done. Now, what's coming up next is we're going to start adding costs, um, cost elements. We're going to be building up your scope. You'll be able to put uncertainty on that scope. So that's not the risk register or anything like that, but that's what's coming up next uh, in, in video eight. But um, because we've just been looking at um, your your groupings, so we've been looking at your cost breakdown structure, essentially. Now, if you want to know about how you could maybe use Excel to import and bring that in and automatically build and construct that CBS for you and hang the right cost elements off the right parts of the tree, all automatically for you, then I suggest you skip to video 16 in the series. Um, if you want to do something a little more advanced than that, then you might want to go and skip to video 22, um, where we talk about having multiple cost breakdown structures. So that enables you to slice and dice the report outputs that you're getting from your Monte Carlo simulation via different means. So it could be you know, a CBS, a cost breakdown structure, or a WBS, work breakdown structure, or it could be an organization breakdown structure, or it could be anything else that you can imagine. So video 22 for that one, but that's that's more advanced, but okay. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.